welcome to today's video. Today I'll be showing you guys how to set up gripping in virtual reality. All right, so before we get started, there's a lot of ways to go about doing grabbing, and there's also a lot of reasons why you'd want to. The main one being that being able to grab things in a virtual reality space makes things a little bit more interactive. Um, and in some cases, it might be a good mechanic uh, to for interaction with certain elements. Um, so in this in this video, I'm only going to show you guys how to do this in C++. In a future video, I do plan to show you guys how this is all done in Blueprints as well. Um, but for this video, I'm only gonna show you guys how to do this in C++. Um, so first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna open up the uh, player and the player pawn and the motion controller from last video. Um, so I'm getting that opened up right here. Uh, come on, there we go. Uh, so I already have player pawn motion controller opened up. Um, and there's going to be something else that I am going to set up right now. Um, and this is where you have a little bit of radiation and how you want to set things up. Um, so the way I usually prefer to do it is I usually prefer to make a class that you want to grab. You don't really need to do too much to it other than, you know, maybe provide a, uh, a static mesh to it or, 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 you know, something like that. Um, but there's, other than that, there's not a lot of reasons that you would need to unless you want to have several different uh, variations of, uh, you know, if you want to have several different things like some grippable objects um, are able to be interacted with, uh, you could just kind of uh, create a, a new class based off that one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, grippable actor. Um, in case you didn't notice, I'm making this an actor. So I'm going to go let that get added into the project. All right, so we have our new actors now added into our project. Um, I'm going to go and do a quick setup for this. Um, like I said, there's quite frankly not a lot that needs to be done to this. The main reason we're doing this is that when you go to grab things, um, the method that we'll be using to grab things in this video uh, it's going to grab all nearby actors, which can include a lot of things that you don't want to grab. Um, so it's so uh, from my experience, I find it's a little bit better if you have a specific type, uh, a specific class of actor that you're looking for. Uh, and the nice thing about this is if you want to create uh, other grabbable objects later on, you can just uh, base a new class off of that and it, it'll still work just fine. So we're not going to need to add too much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add in a static mesh um, static mesh just so we're able to see what it is we're grabbing um, we do need something to be able to grab uh, and we'll just go and call it static mesh uh, there we go and we'll go and add that into this cpp file um, so we'll just need to do static mesh becomes equal to create default sub object use static mesh component. Uh, I did do that. Yeah, component. Okay. I just want to make sure there is a static mesh and static mesh component. I thought for a second I had done a static mesh component, which is not what you want. Um, and then we'll just go and set as our root component. Okay. And there we go. Um, so that should be all good for the grippable actor. Um, so we'll go and jump over into the motion controller. All right, so, in, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go and modify the motion controller a little bit. Um, so the whole process of grabbing is actually two parts. So we have the first part that's actually uh, grabbing, which is going to be one function, and the second part is going to be uh, the release, um, which is going to be a second function. We'll go and go ahead and do both of those. Um, and then we're also going to need to add a component into the motion controller as well um, that will actually be able to detect everything that's around the hand and uh, figure out what it is that we can actually grab from what is around the hand. Um, so in order to do that, we're actually going to create a, um, a sphere component um, this will actually be invisible. It'll be around the hand. Um, be components. Uh, I spelled components wrong. Components slash 
here, component.h. I believe that's right, right? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, okay. Make this one visible anywhere. And class is here. That's not. Uh, and we'll call it collision sphere. So this will be the sphere that we actually use to find everything that's around the hand and actually figure out what it is we can grab. Um, so that is that. And then we're also gonna go and create a function. Uh, we're actually gonna make this public. Um, and we'll create two. Um, second one will be called release. Um, which should be pretty self-explanatory, but basically grab will be what we do to actually grab um, the nearby, grab the, um, grippable actors and then release will use to release them. Um, I'll just go and create this manually. I'm not gonna bother that. Um, let me go and do that real quick and then we'll go ahead and uh, create the sphere component in the constructor. So let's go and create that sphere component up here in the constructor real quick. Um, so there are a few things we're gonna wanna add into this. Um, so there's a few different things that we'll have, have to actually do to the sphere component as well to make sure it'll work properly. Um, first, let's go and create it. Um, Collision sphere. Okay, and then so there's gonna be a number of things that we're gonna to want to do. Um, oh, uh, that's supposed to be collision sphere. Um, so first thing we're gonna to want to do is uh, we're going to want to set a radius for the sphere. Now this is entirely up to you how far you want to be able to grab things and things like that. Um, I'm just gonna set it to uh, 50 units. Uh, Unreal Engine, I believe, I want to say it works in centimeters or something like that. Um, I can't remember. Uh, it, I believe it does convert to an actual measurement in in the real world, um, but um, I usually call them just units just for the sake of it. Uh, makes things just a little bit easier. Um, set sphere radius. Set sphere radius and we'll do 50.0f um, okay uh, next thing we're going to want to do is we're actually going to want to set the uh, cl the collision response channels so the way uh, Unreal Engine works is you have several different collision channels um, so uh, in this case we're actually going to set to overlap with everything so there's three states so you have ignore which means that there will be no collision and there there will be no any sort of responses with anything. Overlap, which is what we'll be using, where basically we, it will still glide through everything, but we'll still be able to pick up anything that is colliding with it. And then uh, block is the third one. And block is essentially, you know, once you hit it, stop. You know, it's it's a, a, an actual collision. Um, so we're gonna wanna do a set, uh, it was set collision response to all channels. Um, and we will want to do ECR uh, collision. Was it ECR collision? E collision, my bad. Um, and I hit caps lock. No, I didn't. Why is it doing that? E collision uh, response ECR. This was the name ECR overlap. All right, so this will set so that way it overlaps with everything. So it'll it won't actually you know hit it, but we'll, so we'll be able to still get everything that is colliding with it. Um, and then the last thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure it is in fact um, set up attachment. Um, we do want to make sure it is actually attached properly to the hand mesh um, and not to anything else. So. Um, 
that's just to be sure uh so yeah so there's all that so we'll go and go on down to grab and release next and let's go and have a quick look at that um we'll start out with the grab um there's so some of this you may not need to do again it kind of depends on what you're doing um but essentially what i'm going to end up doing is um i want to be able to only grab one object um so what i'm going to end up doing is i'm going to go through everything make sure that see if there's multiple uh, grippable actors and if there is we're going to find whichever one is the closest to the hand mesh and grab that one specifically um, again, you may or may not need to do this. This is up to you. If you want to be able to grab multiple objects, you can. Um, I'm sure that there are reasons you would want to. Um, but yeah. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do a C actor. And for now, we'll just go and set that to no. Um, and actually, yes, I do need it to be a pointer. Um, Okay, and then we're also going to want to create a T array. This is going to hold every actor that we that's overlapping with our sphere. Um, the C actor we're actually going to use to find whichever one is the closest, um, or if there even is one. Um, so we're going to want to do collision sphere get overlap in the actors. There we go, and. So we're going to want to grab the overlapping. I believe that is it. Okay, so this took me a sec. Uh, this is supposed to be a pointer. Uh, that is my bad. Um, so then we're going to want to go through each one. Uh, actor, we'll call it, um, we'll call it O actor for now. And we're going to want to get them all from overlapping. So that way we're making sure we're going through everything. Oh, pointer. All right, so what we're gonna wanna do is we're actually gonna wanna go through and check um, each actor. Uh, first thing we're gonna wanna check for is to see um, if C actor is actually null. Um, if it is, then we're gonna wanna set whatever O actor is, assuming that uh, O actor uh, get class is child of, and we're gonna wanna do, um, a grippable supposed to be a grippable act right oh you know what? i forgot to include it uh so you do want to remember to include grippable actor there's grippable actor dot h um otherwise it won't actually show up there um so a grippable actor there we are and static class um so this this will make sure that it is a grippable actor of some sort. So even if you derive, so even if you create a class that's derived from grippable actor, um, it'll still pick it up. Um, and if this is the case, we're gonna just want to set C actor equal to O actor. All right. So our next thing we're gonna want to check for is um, assuming that C actor is not null, uh, then we're just gonna want to check to see. If O actor ooh, get class uh, is child of, so we're just going to be checking to see if it is. Um, oops. Um. So if it is, then. Um, if we've gotten to this point, then we know that it is one, but C actor is not equal to null. Um, so in this case, this is where we're going to want to actually compare the distances between the two. Um, and so there's actually a couple of ways you can go about doing this. If you want, you can actually uh, fully on solve it out um, all the way. But there is actually, um, they, uh, it is actually built into the F vector that we can actually find the distance between two points. Um, so uh, F vector distance. So we're just going to need two points. So our first point is going to be the O actor dot. Uh, we're going to want to get world location. 
Uh, I'm doing one thing. Get world. Get actor location, my bad. Uh, okay, so uh, it's gonna be O actor, get actor location. Um, and they're also going to want to get hand mesh. Get, and then this one I think is world location. To get component location. There it is. Uh, this will get at the world, if I recall. Um, which is what we want. Okay, and we're going to set this. Um, uh, let's see. So this is actually be a float. Not capital. Float. Uh, we'll call this. I don't know. Um, competing distance. Why not? Competing distance. <laughs> Why not? Um, uh, something stupid, why not? Uh, uh, orig original distance. Um, okay, so, uh, the other one we're going to check for is if C, is we're going to want to get C actors, get actor location. And we'll compare this one to the hand mesh location. All right. So once we got those, uh, we'll go and create a quick if, and we'll find if. Um, so we want to find if competing distance is less than original distance, and if it is, then we will set C actor to O after. Uh, and there we go. Um, so that's that part. Uh, next thing we're going to want to do is we're actually going to want to attach it. All right, so once we've gone through to this point, um, then we should have at least gotten some actor. Um, first thing we're going to want to do is first check and make sure we actually did. Um, so we're going to want to make sure it's not null. Okay, so um, at this point, we... Um, We've checked to make sure that C actor is actually uh, checked off. Um, so what we're gonna wanna do is cast to it. And the reason being is that what we wanna do is we actually wanna take this component, the static mesh um, right here, and we're actually gonna wanna attach that to the uh, hand mesh, um, or at the very least to the actor itself. Um, so that way it is actually attached and it's moving around with the hand. Um, so what we're gonna wanna do is do a uh, uh, well, actually, we need a cast. Uh, so, uh, a after uh, we'll call it G actor, which is equal to uh, cast, and we'll check C actor. Okay, once we have that, then we're gonna want to do G actor. Um, we call it static mesh, I believe. There it is, static mesh. Oh, why are you freezing on me? There we go. Um, attach to, I believe it's attach to, right? No, it's attach to component. Okay, there we go. Um, at this point, we're going to want to grab, uh, we'll attach to the hand mesh. Um, actually, we'll attach it to the motion controller. I think motion controller will be a little bit better. Um, and then we're also going to need to set uh, F attachment transform rules. Um, so we're going to want to do uh, F attachment transform rules. And um, we're going to want to do keep world transform. Um, reason being is that if if something is like, you know, X1000 or something, then when you attach it and you set to relative, then it'll actually go to X1000, which might be way off of uh, what you're trying to do. Um, something else we're gonna wanna do is uh, G actor static mesh. So static mesh is what holds the 
come on, is what holds the physics uh, part of this. Um, so what we're gonna wanna do is um, set simulate physics to false. Uh, reason being is that uh, if you set it to true and you start moving around, what, what'll actually end up happening is you'll is you'll still be able to move it around, um, but it'll be falling every time you move it around. So like if you pick up your hand, it'll come up a little bit and then fall down onto the ground until it finally hits something. And one, it doesn't look right. Um, and two, that's not typically what you want to do when you're grabbing something. All right, so next thing we're going to want to do is, uh, is I'm going to go ahead and go through the release. Um, so release is actually a little bit simpler. Um, so since we already have it attached, um, we can easily grab it. Um, so what we'll go and do is um, attached actors is what we'll call it. Um, and we'll want to get, you just get attached, yep, there it is, get attached actors. Uh, and that was supposed to be a T array, my bad. Um, and I'm screwing things up. Huh. There we go. Uh, so T array, and this will go into attached uh, actors. Why is my spelling messing up my spelling? Okay. Um, and we're gonna want to go through each. Um, um, we'll call it, we'll just say A actors for now. Um, and we'll want to go through attached actors. Okay. Um, so for each, we're first we want to make sure that it is um, the correct class. Um, so we're going to want to do uh, da 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 da. class is child of there we go and assuming it is first off so we're basically going to end up undoing all this um so which is actually not too bad um i'm actually going to go and copy this just to keep it quick um so we already have this this is actually needs to be we call it to A actor. Um, and then once we have that, we we want to simulate physics again, first off. And second off, we're not gonna attach from, com from component. We're gonna detach from component. And that has to go. Okay, so a few slight misspellings on my part. Uh, this is supposed to be uh, F detachment transform rules. And this, I just forgot the S at the end, so it's A actors. Um, in hindsight, I should have just left it a actor. Um, but hey, that's it. That's the uh, the grabbing and releasing. Uh, and then finally, we just have to attach it to the player pawn.cpp, um, which means that we'll go ahead and have to bind the actions real quick. Okay, so once we get to this point, we just have to bind our bind the actions. So let me go and double check what our gripping buttons are. Uh, input, there it is. All right, so we're not using teleport. We're using grab left and grab right. Um, so in case you're unaware, I only have an Oculus, so I can't show you on like a Vive or anything like that. But the grip button is this one right here on the um, on an Oculus touch controller. Um, so uh, that's the one that we're actually binding. Um, and we need to do that for both the controllers, um, which isn't so bad. Uh, it's fairly simple, um, but we need to remember that grab left, grab right. All right, so was it? Yes, it was an action. Okay. Input component, bind action, and we'll do, uh, not teleport, grab left, press, and I actually forgot to make functions for this. So let's go and do this real quick. Um, uh, so we'll do grab left, release left, and then we'll do grab right, and 
Luis. Right. Um, okay. Uh, let me just go and grab these real quick. I'm gonna keep this nice and quick. Copying and pasting usually isn't the way I would do things, but for the sake of uh, time in the video, um, I figured this might be the best way to go about doing things. Um, quite frankly, it doesn't really matter, but uh, yeah, I, I personally just usually prefer to write things out. Uh, okay, and this one's grab left. Okay, and components, oh, find action, whoops, okay, I'm messing up typing all over the place, least is uh, at a player. This one will be our release, uh, release left. There we go. Uh, let me go and just copy this real quick. I'll just go ahead and do this. All right. There we go. Uh, and there we go. Um, last thing we're gonna need to do is grab our controllers. And yeah, uh, let me go and just double check real quick, make sure I have wrong. Yep, left controller. Um, so left controller, grab. Left controller, release. There we go. Uh, should be all good. So we'll go and give this a quick test and see what. Oh, I forgot to compile. Um, but after I compile. Hello. So you may have noticed during this video, I did want to just make a quick note. Um, uh, I accidentally messed up uh, when I was uh, using OBS when I recorded this originally, which is why you might have noticed I was highlighting the code and it didn't quite line up with. Uh, what I was talking about perfectly um, so yeah uh, that and you probably also noticed too um, during when uh, I was going over the player pond.cpp um, I was fixing a few things because I kind of went through quickly and missed a couple things there um, but uh, yeah um, but I did still want to show you guys you know uh, everything still works and everything um, so I actually already have it loaded up right here um, if I Reach it with my hand out. There it is. Uh, if I can reach it, come on. Come on. Oh, okay, I cannot reach this one. Come on. Let's go three off center. a little bit of work, um, but you can see uh, I got it all moved around and I can drop it, uh, physics, start up again, and uh, yeah, so it all works. Um, all the code and everything works, it's uh, exactly how I wrote it during the video. Um, uh, of course, the only thing that uh, happened was that <laughs> I accidentally lost the original video, so um, uh, Needless to say, I found what caused that and fixed it, but, uh, yeah, so, um, if you guys 
found this interesting. Uh, you know, comment, like, subscribe, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right. Bye.